This week in Collective Worship, we're listening to Show Tunes. This song is from the theatre show Joseph and the Amazing Technical Dreamcoat, and the song is called Any Dream Will Do, written by Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber. in your face, your neck, and shoulders. Do your best to fully let go. And turn your attention to the breath, the calming breath, the soothing breath. Take long, slow breaths, full and deep. Breathing in, I am calm. Breathing out, I'm at peace. The Book of Fascinating Facts All Englishmen over the age of 14 must spend two hours a week practising the longbow, supervised by the local clergy. This law dates from the Middle Ages when there was no standing army, so in times of war, noblemen were required to provide knights, archers and infantry. Hmm. How things work Discover the inner workings of 150 machines, gadgets and vehicles, from digital cameras to bucket wheel excavators. Each illustration explains the technology behind central components and throughout there are photographs to show each subject in action. Every spread explores the history and the future of individual inventions while internet links provide an exciting way to find out more. Three of Diamonds Life can be tough as the younger brother of the world's most effective detective, but Nick Diamond has survived, so far. The next three adventures will test his survival instincts to the full. A school reunion on a remote Scottish island, a dream holiday in Paris, an investigation into the blurry photo of a mysterious stranger. What connects them? Murder. And if the Diamond Brothers can't play their cards right, they could be next. 
I can't decide which one to read first. So, children, help me out. Let's have a vote. Hands up now, who thinks I should read the Book of Fascinating Facts first? Okay. How about How Things Work? Hands up if you think I should read this one first. Or hands up if you think I should read The Three of Diamonds first. Thanks for voting. Did you know that once upon a time, not everybody was allowed to vote? This is the story of Emily Davison. She was a suffragette. Huh? What's that? Suffragism comes from the Latin word for to vote. And this is a little story about her struggle to get votes for women. So let's meet Emily in the photo taken more than a hundred years ago in 1910, a few years after the reign of Queen Victoria ended. She was born in London in 1872. Her mother Margaret was only 19 when she was born and her father was 25 years older and had already retired. Emily was given an education and that was unusual for girls in her day, first at home with a governess and then at school in London. Emily knew how important learning was and she then started at university. But when her father died, there was no money left. But do you think that stopped her? No way. Emily got a job as a teacher and saved enough to go to St Hugh's College, Oxford, where she sat her final exams. But even though she passed with top marks, she wasn't given her degree. Why? That's right, because she was a woman and only men could get university degrees. While Emily was working as a teacher, she met the most famous suffragette of them all, Emmeline Pankhurst. Mrs Pankhurst was passionately involved in getting votes for women and Emily knew immediately that she wanted to help. So she joined the Women's Social and Political Union, the WSPU, the group of women that was organising the fight for votes. They had already written to members of parliament and held parades and meetings and polite demonstrations, but they were always ignored so they were forced to take some more dramatic action to get noticed. What did they do? Well, they threw stones and they smashed the windows of government buildings. They chained themselves to railings and refused to move until they were dragged away by police. Emily's own idea was to set fire to post boxes in the street. The suffragettes were arrested and put in prison, where they went on hunger strike and refused to eat in 1913. Emily went to the races on Derby Day. She took with her a scarf in the suffragette colours of violet, white and green. As the horses galloped past, she ran out onto the racetrack, right in front of the King's horse, Anna, hoping to throw the scarf around his neck. She was hit and badly hurt, and she died four days later in hospital. Was it really their violent actions that won women the right to vote? the stone throwing, the arrests, the broken windows. What really transformed people's view of women was the outbreak of the First World War in 1914. Suddenly, women were needed to do men's jobs and they could do them every bit as well as men. And by 1918, with the help of Prime Minister David Lloyd George, who supported the women's struggle, an Act of Parliament was passed finally allowing women over 30 to have the vote. It took another 10 years for all adult women to get this right. Emily was one of many suffragettes who fought for women's rights. She paid the highest possible price and we should always remember her courage and determination with wholehearted thanks. Emmeline Panker said, we are here, not because we are lawbreakers, we are here in our efforts to become lawmakers. And if you'd like this prayer to be your prayer, it's our at the end, you're welcome to look at the candle flame where you can put your hands and your eyes together. And if this prayer is not for you, then take this time to reflect on what justice means to you. Dear Lord, we pray for anyone who is left out or ignored. We pray for a fairer world where everyone matters. 
We thank you for the courage of people who fought for the right to vote in this country. We thank you for the people who showed courage and determination in speaking out and standing up for what they believe in. Please help us to have the courage to speak up when we see unfairness and injustice. Amen. What's that word? Justice. Justice is when a person gets what they deserve, whether good or bad, whether they like it or not. Sometimes it's easy to understand justice. Like if you get all the answers right on a test and you get a perfect grade. That's justice because you answered all the questions perfectly and got the grade you deserved. But let's just say you gave the wrong answers to some of the questions. Should you still get a perfect grade? Nope. Instead, you'll get the grade you deserve based on how you answered the questions. That's justice too, even though it probably wouldn't feel very good and you wouldn't like it very much. We'd still say it's just or that justice was served. Or what if the whole class took a test, but the teacher gave everyone a zero because one person cheated? Would that be just? No way! The Bible says every person is made in the image of God. And because God made us, we're all equally valuable, special, and loved by God. But that doesn't mean we're all exactly the same. The world would be pretty boring if everyone had the same name, lived in the same home, did their hair the same way, had the same color skin, and were good at all the same things. Instead, we're all different. We have different names, Homes, hairstyles, skin colors, talents, abilities, cultures, traditions, ethnicities. And that's exactly the way God wanted it. We're all different reflections of God's image. The problem is we don't always act like every other person is made in God's image. We don't always treat other people justly. We can sometimes focus on our own differences, different skin colors or talents or traditions, and then treat people who are similar to us better than we treat people who are different. And because of that, instead of the world being a place full of justice where everyone gets exactly what they deserve, the world is full of injustice. Injustice is whenever someone is not treated like a human being made in God's image. And like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Sometimes it's easy to find injustice and fix it. Like if you saw someone get punished for something they didn't do, you could call that injustice because they're getting punishment that they didn't deserve. You could try and fix that injustice by telling the truth to someone in authority and they could make it right. But sometimes injustice is harder to fix. Like for example, when a whole group of people are being treated unfairly because of the color of their skin and they tell the people in authority about it. But the people in authority don't fix the injustice because there's a lot of people involved and maybe even a whole system that needs to change. It can be really difficult. It can even feel like fighting for justice. The Bible says people who follow God should act with justice by standing up for those who have been treated badly giving food to the hungry people and setting prisoners free. And the best example of someone fighting for justice was Jesus. Jesus said, anything you do for one of the least important of these brothers and sisters of mine, you do for me. Jesus healed people who were sick and blind and he taught his followers to feed people who are hungry, take care of people who are sick, and include people who are ignored, even visiting people who were put into prison. But Jesus also stood up for those who didn't have any power. Jesus stood up for people who were being mistreated. He respected women and children, even though most people at that time didn't. And when he saw powerful leaders hurt people, Jesus spoke up about it. He told his followers to stand up for the people who didn't receive justice. Jesus not only showed us it was possible to fight for justice, he showed us that it's what we're supposed to do. Let's finish with a song. Only men were allowed to vote, and towards the end of Victoria's reign, some women started protesting this was unfair. A good day. We are the suffragettes. Think you know some fierce girls? You ain't heard nothing yet. A less called Millie Fawcett found a rather cause. Started the battle for our rights Argued the government should change the laws Here is how she stated our plight How come girls can't vote for rules that we have to obey When we work and pay taxes too Parliament's reaction was And do go 
go away. How dare they diss the suffrage crew? Women votes if they're so stupid they'll do that. Seemed our cause was lost when World War came along. Our suffragette reaction was to wave our protest goodbye for a while so long to patriotic action. Put down our banner saying give us votes instead. Supported the men's fight. Work to help them win the war, so guess what they said? Okay, ladies, you were right. See you in school.